I'm going to show you how to one-shot any open world boss of any level while you are basically any level. You have to be at least level 2 in order to one-shot any boss in the entire game. Well, in the open world. It has to be an open world boss, like Jetragon. Now, I'm going to show you how to do this on Jetragon specifically, and just know he's the hardest one to do it on because of how fast he is. Every other boss will be way easier than Jetragon, just purely off of speed. Speed is one of the hardest things to deal with when you cheese him with the one-shot trick I'm going to show you. The first thing you're going to want to do, it's optional, but I highly recommend it, is build up Halbox as close to the boss arena as it'll let you build. So for this one, I can build it right here. Any further than that, say it's too close to a special boss facility or a special boss or something then from there if you die it'll respawn you right here and that'll be close enough to the boss generally that it won't reset the boss's hp if you die which is really nice if you mess up and even more importantly if the boss is stuck somewhere let's say uh when you respawn they'll hopefully still be stuck there so even if you get through one step of the one shot and then die you could hopefully come back in and then continue on with what you need to do to one shot these bosses and the other reason to build the pal box is so you can fast travel away and come back because you're gonna need a lot of either wood or stone depending what level you are if level two you got to use wood level 19 you can use stone which is a lot better for this but you can make either one work potentially it depends on the boss too but stone is ideal wood is possible though now in my case i'm going to use stone so stone foundations i have a bunch of stone ready so you want to find the border of the boss arena for building actual foundations which is going to be closer than pal box and then you have to look around and you want to find a good straight line. So in my case, I'm going to try to line this up with that straight area in front of me because I need this to go really, really, really far. So I'm going to try it from maybe right here. And you got to look at the elevation. If you're heading up a hill, you're going to want to raise it like this. If you're heading down a hill, you want to make it as low as possible from the start. You just need a really long strip. So in my case, I think as long as I have it right about here, maybe I should be okay. So then what we're going to do is climb up on this. And we're going to make stone foundations and we are going to run down this line like this and see just how far we can take this. Now, I don't have an exact number for you, but if I had to guesstimate, it's probably something like 15 to 20, maybe 25 of these in a row that you want. So we're just going to go as far as we can here. It looks like I can even slip one in right there and now I'm out of space. So now what I'm going to do is build a little bit more over to the side here and make a big open space for me to build on. And we're not actually really going to be building here, but I'm going to stick one there just because I can. Maybe I can get one right here. It looks like I can. There we go. Okay. So now that you've got something to work with like that, now you've got to head back to the other side. And now what you're going to want is stone stairs. Now, depending on how you did this, you may have to do it two different ways. Now, in my case, I'm going to be able to put it like this maybe. Oh, no. Too close to a boss facility. I'll have to delete this and then do like this. Okay. I need to be able to walk on it without having to jump or climb or anything. Now, if you get it like that, you'll be able to just build up. Now, if it's already flush, what you'll have to do then to build up is get a stone wall, a window, stone door, or just a stone wall. Put one like that, and then put stone stairs, and then you'll be able to go up. But in my case, since I was able to get the one on the edge, I'm good. And now I can just Fortnite up, basically. So what I'm going to do here is going to Fortnite up all the way till I get to the other side. Now, as long as there are foundations underneath of this staircase that I'm making, I'll be able to build this up as high as I want. So I can check periodically and see how far I've gone. And once I get to the end, I'm going to stop building up, and I'm going to start building flat. So it looks like I'm right up at to the end part, so maybe right here. And then we're going to take a look around. Hopefully this is far enough. Uh, it looks close at least. Uh, enough for proof of concept here sh to show you what I'm talking about. So now what we're going to do is we're going to build stone roofs, and we're going to build a platform, something, depends on the size of the boss. This guy's humongous, so I'm going to ideally build out a really big one like this. And just know it's very, very easy to die during this. So what we're going to do here is build a stone door right here and right here. And then I'm going to build, and this doesn't have to be exactly, exactly like what I'm doing here. But I just want multiple escape points here. So uh, not enough support there. So I don't even need this one to be a door. I'm just going to go ahead, delete that, and build a stone wall instead. Okay. So now what we have here is I need to build stone stairs and stone stairs. Thankfully, I have this built right to where I can do this. I just need one side that I can go to to get out. So I'm going to put a stone wall there, and then I'm going to build another stone door over here. I'm going to leave this one open. Now, if the boss is smaller, you'll have to open and close it as you go. This guy's so big, he can't fit through a door, though. So now what we're going to do here is, and this is special for this particular boss because he's gigantic. I'm going to build a bunch of stone walls right here. And then I'm going to attempt to build them like this and this. And my main goal here is I need to be able to see over there and build a stone wall right there later on. So as long as I got all that, 
hopefully this will work now it's jetragon's gonna be the hardest one i've ever had to do this to but that's why i'm showing you jetragon just know that most of the other bosses will be easier just because they're not as fast as jetragon okay so now for the hardest part again because jetragon's so fast now because jetragon's so fast i may just use my own jetragon a slower boss you can just run on foot but what i'm gonna try to do here is aggro jetragon okay so jetragon's so big i tried expanding the stairs double wide and now maybe i'll have some better luck with this again jetragon's probably the hardest boss you're ever going to do this to just because how fast he is but other bosses should be way i mean i've done this to other bosses and they are way easier so i'm going to try this on foot and see if he can find his way up here now okay so now that I made these double wide i've tested this it does work all the problem with jetragon is he's so fast that um i need a fast mount so even though i'm using jetragon i could use the deer I could use anything, whatever is so I gotta stay on the ground. And then I gotta run up the stairs. Now, he's super dangerous because he can just do this and do an insane amount of damage. But I can get him to go up the stairs now, which is the goal. Now, Jetragon specifically, there's something you need to know about him. And I think a lot of bosses do this. It's just pronounced really hard on Jetragon, which is that um, they can only roam away a certain distance from their initial aggro point. So for Jetragon specifically, what I have to do is I have to travel away and travel back to reset him. And then wait for a lucky cycle where he roams over to where I'm at right now. So if he goes that way, I'd have to go fast travel away and come back until instead he roams towards my structure. Now you could wait for him to roam over naturally, but it could take a while. That's why I like resetting over and over again using the PAL box. And then if you can get him close enough before he aggroes, this might not be close enough. But if you can get him close enough before he aggroes, then you'll be able to get him to go the whole way up the stairs. So we're going to see if we can get him up the stairs all the way now. Uh, but this might be too far. We're going to find out. You can also use your structure as cover. It'll be really helpful. We're going to see if we can get him all the way up. And I don't think I had him close enough. Nope. He's got to be up for this particular one. He's got to be at the base of the stairs. Something important to keep in mind. At this boss, I had to build perfectly away from the center of his point, spawn point. But for some terrains, and maybe even here, I could have done over here. If you build perpendicular to it. So if I would have built sideways, it would have made it a lot easier to keep him close enough to his boss arena to not despawn the main thing is if you leash him too far away from the boss arena that's what will cause him to reset so if you build exactly away like i did just now that's going to make it as hard as possible to get him to go all the way up additionally if you want to reset him you can always just go far enough away from the spawn and he'll disappear eventually so you see him in the distance he disappeared and then you can just go back again and again and again so that's another alternative for resetting him and that'll bring him back to his original point it'll actually change out the dragon to the different dragon different hp value and everything so you can do whichever way to reset him until eventually you get a roam pattern you want. He's actually at the base of the tower or close to it if you built perpendicular to the spawn. Okay, I've got him kind of close to the spawn point. We'll see if I can get it now. So I'm going to jump off the dragon up here. He's going to beat the hell out of me. Thank God I have a shield. This is the hardest one to do this to. So we're going to run around now while he's still here. And we're going to block him in and see if that got him. Maybe it blocked him in. So he might be trapped up there. And we're close enough now that he shouldn't despawn during our respawn as long as we have this pal box here now if i didn't die i wouldn't have to even respawn so i'm gonna go ahead and throw down my dragon real fast go up there and take a look so he's still up there i just need to get my stuff real fast i'm gonna die to the heat so we're gonna grab all this and then put on that and now what we're gonna do this is one way to do it he's trying to go back to his spawn but he can't so we're gonna go over here and we're gonna make sure this is actually fully closed off um at least do a double layer but trying to get that one point over there all right so we got him trapped up here now so all we got to do is aggro him and then drop down and parachute and hopefully not die so what he should do now is he should fly off the ledge the ledge here in a second once he tries to do a good attack for it but i also could just try to get to the side to help okay come on jet dragon um actually i'm stuck right here okay hold up oh now i'm inside the mesh oh no oh god now my jet dragon's in the mesh okay well things are not going too hot here okay i got out all right there we go i launched him off now he's gonna fall and he almost died to fall damage. Now, unfortunately, he lived because I did not make this tall enough. But he took 9,000 damage from that fall. So if you do this right, you make it just tall enough for whatever boss you're trying to kill. 
you'll just one shot him. Now, the reason he lived actually is because he landed on that ledge down there, which is like four, five, six layers up from the base of this. So we actually reduced the height of this by like six. So I'm going to reset real fast and get him again. Okay, this time we're going to try it a little bit different. I'm just going to build a wooden gate up here and that'll lock him up here. We'll see if this will be better for our boss this big. Okay, this time we'll get the one shot for sure. So once he gets here, going to land in his face. That should be close enough. And now I got to lure him back. And now he's got a good straight line to look at. And hopefully we'll be able to get him up here. Ow. All right. Here he comes. Going through the gate. There we go. He's the rest of the way in. I can't get off my pal. So we're kind of stuck. There, I closed the gate on him. All right. Now he's stuck up here. So now what we can do is we can either break the structure or we can try to lure him off, which luring him off is really sketchy because um, depending on what he lands on, he may not take the full fall damage, but we're going to try luring him off. Actually, you know what? He de -aggroed. Let me go ahead. I need to aggro him because there's bones underneath him. Oh, he's right there right now. When he's on the right is what I need him to be when I tear this down. So we're going to wait for him to roam over to the right, and then we're going to tear it down. This one's a weird case because there's tons of things underneath of him. So there we go. There he goes. And one shot. We just one shot Jetragon. So let's get down here. Let's see what he dropped. If I can even find it off his body. Might have gone underneath the ground. I don't know where his stuff went. Maybe it's up in the sky. Okay, so I learned something new for the first time here. Make sure you do at least one damage to him. On that particular one, I aggroed him by walking at him. Um, ideally, shoot him one time with a bow or something, or else it won't give you anything, or it just bugged out and his stuff just didn't appear this time, because I've done this before and gotten his stuff. Uh, but that works, and you can do that to any boss. Uh, the one thing you need to know, though, is the amount of XP that you get from one of these bosses is proportional to how much damage you did to it. So... If you only did 1% of the damage, you're only going to get 1% of the XP pool from it. So you can't just kill it with environmental damage and then be able to just get all the XP. So to show you just how easy this is on some of the other bosses that are not Jetragon, I'm going to show you on one that most people are familiar with, which is Mamarest. And I did on a brand new save show you how easy this is, a level 11 save, basic save, and I'm going to kill this thing real fast. So he's down there. I'm up here. I'm going to take the foundations. I'm going to build them from right over here. I'm going to build them over this way. I'm going to build up just a little bit to get over everything over there. And then I need to make sure that I can put stairs on, which I can. And I need to do this double wide. So we're going to stick one right here and make sure the stairs go on. All right, we're good to go. And then I'm just going to go ahead and build out these foundations forward. All right, I built this thing out way further than I needed to for something as simple as Mamarest because he has less HP, but this will work. I made it double wide, make it easier, but you can do it with a single wide. It's just harder to get him up on the stairs. But also keep in mind, smaller bosses like Anubis can easily go up a single stair. You only need to make a double stair for bigger bosses like Jetragon and potentially Mamarest, things like that. So now I'm going to go ahead and build the stairs up all the way. So I've got it built up most of the way. This should be enough for Mamarest. So um, actually, I've rounded up the damages percentage base. So it doesn't matter if it's Mamarest with 4,000 or an enemy with 1,000 or 20,000. It's percentage base based on how far they fall. So what we're going to do here now is I'm going to, on the right here, build these things over here and build a wooden door on the back. And then build a wooden wall right here. And then I'm also going to build a wooden roof over here so I can see around the corner a little bit better. And that should be about good. So now we're going to go run down and, and fight Mamarest. So luckily I happen to have a poison bow with two arrows left. I'm going to do one damage to him. And now for this particular boss, every boss is a little bit different what you're going to do. But for this one, I'm going to wait for him to do a certain attack. He has an attack like a seed burst attack. And that one is equivalent of a melee attack. And once he starts it, he'll just run at me. So here he goes. So once he runs at me, he's committed unless I break line of sight or unless he can't find a path to me. If he can't find a way to get to me, then he'll stop and go to a different attack. But as long as he can find a way to get to me, he'll just keep chasing. So I'm going to be able to run him up here now. I'm going to try to bring him all the way up. <laughs> this is really high, by the way. Uh, I'm going to bring him all the way up. Now, Mamras doesn't reset as easily as the Jetragon does. So it's a lot easier to get him. Jetragon's crazy about resetting. So we're going to take him all the way here to the end. And then the easiest way to do this, we could try blocking him off, but I'm just going to drop him. And there we go. And he's dead. And I got two XP for that, I think, because um, I did one damage to him. So I got two of the XP. 
So we're going to go over here, and he dropped the civilization parts, leather, high-quality pal, oil, and precious pellet, which is proof of concept, by the way, that they are supposed to drop their items. Uh, I'm not sure what happened with Jetragon. It might have been because I did no damage to him, but he will drop the items if you just do one damage to him. So there you go. There's a, there's a man rest. You can do this to any boss. I've, I've done this to Anubis. I've done this to tons of different... I did it to Suzaku. So you can do this to pretty much any open world boss as long as you figure out the right little strategy for it. And there you go. Have fun with it, guys. Any way you want to do it, you can make up your own little strategies. But now you know the concepts behind it. You can create your own inventions, your own Fortnite creations in order to one-shot any boss in Power World.